Hey, Vsauce, still here, but who are you? That is a question we have to ask when we talk about the internet. Now, traditionally, websites use methods like usernames and passwords to let the system know who you are based on your credentials. The passwords are usually very tedious in the minds of users to create. So they go with passwords like 123456, 123456789 or admin. Now, according to NordPass report in 2024, these three are still the most commonly used passwords. A hacker can easily gain access to your account by guessing your passwords. To combat these kinds of security vulnerabilities, additional methods are introduced like two-factor authentication or SMS-based authentication. In SMS-based authentication, a text message is sent to your phone number when you enter your credentials on a website. That contains a six-digit code that you have to enter to let the system know who you are. Now, in two-factor authentication method, an application is installed on your mobile phone which refreshes a six-digit code every 30 seconds. If you manage to enter the code in the 30 second time frame, the system can know who you are and it knows that indeed you are who you say you are. In spite of these security mechanisms, hacking attempts are made every day to gain illegal access to everybody's accounts. This is what happened to Linus from the YouTube channel Linus Tech Tips. Hackers through social engineering managed to gain access to a token that was saved in one of his employees' phones and they were able to get access to Linus's YouTube account and they were able to delete multiple videos off of it. Now with the help of YouTube, these videos were reinserted back. Which raises a question, are our systems secure? What if your Discord group chat is leaked already and is waiting to be read by the FBI authorities? What if I had the keys to your house right now and I'm standing outside the door? Now, whether our systems are hacker-proof, only time can tell. These security mechanisms prevent our accounts from going into oopsie-daisy moments. Oops. is a programming paradigm that lets us visualize the real-world examples in the code that we write. The four pillars of object-oriented programming are abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Now, for the simplicity of this video, I'm not going to discuss the rest of the three points, but I am going to discuss abstraction as I find it very interesting. Abstraction is an attribute of object-oriented programming that lets us hide away the unnecessary complex details on inner workings of our systems. Let's say for example, I own a car, so I will belong to the driver class. Now as belonging to the driver class, I will have access to the operations, getting in the car, wearing the seat belt, turning on the car, changing the gear, and releasing the pedal slowly. This will result in the car moving forward. Now at this point, if anything goes wrong, I would know that there is something wrong with my car and I have to get it repaired by a mechanic who does know the inner workings of the cars. Now as drivers, we don't have to know the inner workings of the car because we are not supposed to know it and it's unnecessary for us to know. This is an example that happened to me in my school time when I was given an assignment to swap the values of two variables. Now I tried to be smart and tried to write this solution rather than the accepted this solution. I tried to explain to my teachers that the details of my program are abstracted. The end user is not going to see the program that I have written in the back that is resulting in the variables getting swapped. I tried to explain to the teacher that the inner workings of my program is going to be abstracted away from the user. The end users who are seeing the output are not going to see the program that I wrote in the back end. The teachers did not budge and I got a zero for it. But I did walk away with the concept of abstraction. And taking it into the real world, we can see that most of the details are not shown to us, but rather the output. This is what happened to Amazon's Just Walkout stores. Amazon tried to start a store chain where users would be able to just walk in, take their items and check out without paying. And artificial intelligence systems would debit their card or place a charge on their cards. This seemed to work fine on paper, but very soon Amazon got exposed for using a thousand Indians sitting in India who were monitoring 24-7 the camera footage. AI received a new nickname that day, actually Indians. Abstraction tells us that if you can get the output as expected, nobody is going to care about what is happening in the backend or the inner workings of the module. This can be translated into the real world where the government doesn't tell us what it does with our taxpayer money and it can even be expanded into the universe, which has all of its secrets locked away. Now, in mine and yours lifetime, 
We won't be around to see the secrets of the universe getting unlocked in the front of our eyes. But there is hope to it. Humans have an innate desire of leaving something behind that speaks for them and carries on their legacy when they are no more. On 5th October 2011, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, passed away. In the same week, another programming legend, Mr. Dennis Ritchie, also passed away on 12th October 2011. The passing of Dennis Ritchie did not get much attention from the media due to Steve Jobs passing away in the same week, but it did carry on their legacy. Me and you as consumers and programmers, we get to let their voices be heard again and again. And in a way, they are still alive within us. All of this sounds very existential, very depressing, but it doesn't have to be. If you as a developer want to make sure that you leave your legacy behind for generations of software developers to come, just write more code. I could argue that writing code is the exact same thing as taking pictures. We cringe at our high school photos the same way we cringe at our code that we wrote 5 years ago. We grow as a software developer the same way we grow as humans. Every piece of code that you write today leaves behind a trace of who you were. What you did know at the time and what you did not know at the time. What programming techniques you knew at the time and what you didn't. The code that you leave behind today will be carried on by generations of software developers to come in the near future and the distant future. So in a way, when you write more code, you do leave your legacy behind for us, rest of the software developers. So thank you for writing code and making the lives of regular people like us simple each and every day. Thank you for writing code and leaving a trace of you behind that will be carried on by the generation of software developers to come. And as always, thanks for watching.